going on everybody it's your boy to slap train welcome back guys to the channel today and our very first official project cars video with our gopro wheel cam now today i wanted to do something that i've been really kind of questioning myself since the game came out and you know can we drift a vehicle you know can we properly drift a car where it feels good enough that we can come back and do some lobbies and maybe do some specific drifting episodes so today I wanted to test out the Mercedes-Benz 300 SEL 6.8 AMG now this car is absolutely fantastic we have a front engine V8 rear wheel drive pushing just over 420 horsepower now I gotta say, I played with this car a little bit the other night. Feels absolutely gorgeous. As I said the other day, Spitzy put out a wheel video on this, just showcasing his sliding. So I figured I would do also the 300 SEL since this seems to be the greatest base. And we're gonna tune this real time and see what we can do with it and how the tune is gonna react to the car. All right, so with that being said, we gotta pick a track. And I don't know if I wanna go with the tracks that we're used to Silverstone national stuff like that or should we go with something a little bit different that we're not maybe say used to if you will Catalonia oh man Catalonia is definitely an option um, and really all of these tracks are great but I want to make sure that I get something that I can you know specifically slide on and have some fun with now I figured we would go with Willow Springs horse thief mile now this is an absolutely nasty track um, and I also want to go ahead and tune the car. So first things first I want to treat this as you guys have no idea how to do this now every time you choose a car You're gonna have to go to my garage, which is why and then from there you're gonna create a new Setup now before we do this we're gonna go ahead and choose our paint job that we want on the car And we do this by going in Mercedes-Benz and we just keep going over until we find the one that we like now This is for every vehicle mind you and look at that man. Oh, man. I like it. We're going with this right here, hands down. That looks absolutely vicious. We're gonna go with new setup. Now this is identical from what you would get starting out. Now a lot of people don't know this, but you need to tune your force feedback per vehicle. Each car has its own force feedback ratings in the tuning setup. My force feedback settings are set to 100 on the main menu and then we go in and then we can change our force feedback we can change our spindle our body we can change all of that so that is where you really fine-tune how the wheel feels with each vehicle all right so we're gonna go with a dry run on just everything that we have right now we're not gonna do anything leave the current setup we're gonna run this as it is bone dry stock and get a dry lap if you will now, I know a lot of people may be asking, you know, Slap, what are you doing trying to drift on Project Cars? This is a racing game. This is not a drifting game. Completely understand what you guys are saying, but you got to think of it from my perspective, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I like to slide, man. I like to drift. A game like this comes out. I want to see what it can do. I want to push some limits on these oversteers and see if we can actually hold them out. Because in theory, we should be with the right tune. All right, now we're going to go ahead and leave everything the same. And we're going to go right right away, man. Let's go. This thing sounds vicious, man. Oh, shit. Whoa, whoa. That wasn't even me, man. Okay. Guy just dummied my car almost, and we're in first gear. There we go. Okay, okay. Holy shit. My Mercedes. It's done. Oh, my. No. We just got it, man. Oh my god. Beautiful. That's a glitch right there, man. Come on now. Alright, so we're gonna try this one more time. Now I've been really enjoying this view. Now, right off the bat, force feedback needs a huge increase big time, man. It's very light. I've been finding that usually for every vehicle, whether we're racing or we are drifting, usually sits at about um i would say about 50 or so and look at this man we are actually i would say trying to correct this mid run and we're gonna have to go ahead and up this force feedback because i don't feel anything as we're playing whatsoever man so we definitely need to go back to the pit box and that is what we're going to do right now and edit our very first tune here 
on Project Car. So first things first, force feedback. We're going to go with 62. Actually, let's go with 60 on here. We're going to leave those separate. I haven't touched any of the FYs or the FXs on this game. If you would like to do so, let me know what you feel is best. Um, but I just feel like this is the set standard one. I'm going to leave it on that. Now, in terms of the body and scale, I have found that the more you move it up, the better it feels in your hands. Now, usually I go with anywhere between 100 to 200 for each. And I, I'd say the best way to describe it, the way that I feel, is it just gives the car more weight in your hands. When you're coming back to center, you feel the tires hook up rather than just going back to center and then going back the other way. I feel like it's a way more kind of a hookup deal rather than just kind of, you know, say moving the wheel back and forth. And if you read that, um, the body stiffness on that, all right, so we're going to leave that at around 110 and 144. We're going to leave everything else the same. Master scale is good. Now, tire compound is big. Um, I have not went ahead and, you know, tested any of these. We have Roland's Red Pig Tire Compounds and Automatic by Weather. So we're going to go with these ones. We're going to give these a shot. We're going to boost up that back tire pressure as well, too, at about maybe 165. I do need to change my damn metric settings on here because I'm using the wrong settings. I don't go by bars. I go by PSI, ladies and gentlemen. I am Canadian, man. Now, we're also going to go ahead and put our brake balance to the rear. Now, the reason I'm doing this is to almost make it act as a handbrake. Um, some of these vehicles do not have handbrakes, and in turn, you're not going to be able to really kind of get out of a sticky situation if you are understeering. So, the back weight on there is going to give you a really good base if you need to get out of trouble quick, where you can just kind of hit that, slam your brake on, and then in turn, the rear end will kick out. Um... Rear camber on this car actually is funny because it does not give you anything to do. It's all at zeros. And I don't know if that's a glitch on this 300 SEL or not, but we have absolutely zero camber in the rear and it is not. And I repeat, it is not tunable, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're going to go ahead, bring down this front camber on here. We got a lot of it, man. Negative 1.9. Front toe in seems to be okay. Maybe we're going to go, eh, let's go with maybe a positive 0.3. Uh, steering ratio I have not really messed with. Now, a low ratio here increases the speed of the steering rack, meaning less input is needed to make the wheels turn. Set it higher to allow finer steering control. So, personally, I feel like this should be kind of right in the middle, uh, just so you don't have that snappiness. But that is all what we're going to find out right now. Now, spring rates. I found like it was, it was kind of very soft on that last run here. So, we're going to go ahead and stiffen up. All of that. Sway bars. Let's go ahead and stiffen up the sway bars actually as well too. I want to see what that's going to do. And really this game is going to come down to just trying out certain things. And not being afraid to do something. And just do it man. Just see how the car is going to react first. Before asking questions. You have your bars on the top right. To kind of give you a better um, say reasoning. So the bump stops will increase the height sparingly. To prevent bottoming out due to the low ride height. Or stiff spring settings. A taller bump stop will stiffen the ride and make it more responsive at the expense of some stability. So taller bump stops will stiffen the ride and make it more responsive. So that's what we've done. We've made it, I believe, higher. Or actually, no, I think lower would be stiff. So we're going to see how that's going to go. Now, I wish it said, you know, stiff and loose, not high and low. But that's, oh, there we go, right there. Never mind. Never mind, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just, oh, okay, never mind. So here it actually says stiff and soft. So we're going to go ahead and soften that for the bump stop. Slow bump. Boom, boom. And we should be good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there is hours and hours of tuning ahead. Uh, so please bear with me on the tunes right now. Half the things I'm just trying out and seeing what is going to happen. Limited slip diff. Now, this is something that I wanted to kind of point out. High settings here give the car better traction coming out of corners, but limit your ability to turn. Lower settings reverse this, making it easier to turn out, but with the possibility of wheel spin on exit on tight corners. So, with that being said, a lower diff in this case is going to give us more wheel spin, if that makes any sense. We're going to want this preload ready to snap right out, so we're going to max that out, and we should be good. Now, we even have a radiator open and closed, man. Look at the detail of tuning in this game. Radiators are the main means of cooling an engine with an open setting, allowing more air to be passed 
and the closed setting meaning less wind resistance and therefore more speed. Many cars have water temperature gauges, so monitor that to determine if the radiator should be open more. A track with long straights and cooler weather conditions will need to be open less, for example. Now, how dope is that, man? Oh my god, that is absolutely crazy. Now, final drive, we're going to go ahead and maybe, maybe increase it, I don't know. I think we're going to leave it the same right now, just to get a feel for the gears and engine. Fuel load, we're going to leave it at 41 all around. We don't need any more fuel than that. And that should be good, ladies and gentlemen. So, the biggest thing, before we leave this, we need to save it. I've watched so many people just not even save their tunes. Now, in order to save your tune, you're going to hit the right paddle twice. And you're going to hit A once you're on your summary. That's your save button. You're going to see your car change, whatever you've done. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go ahead and take this bit for a drive, man. Oh, I'm pumped right now. Let's go, baby. They need to fix this shit, though. Look at it. Look at that, man. They're damaging my car right off the bat. It's not cool, man. Ooh, all right. Now, this game, throttle control, is key, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, okay. Ooh, I actually want to hit this little section right here, to be honest with you. Here we go. Oh, I need that e-brake so bad, man. I don't believe that my e-brake is, I don't believe it's on. Yeah, it's definitely not on. This car does not have an e-brake, sadly. And some cars just don't have e-brakes. So in this case, you really have to use the turning in a lot more and really using the, the actual car's weight, which I just did on that corner. You want to be able to just turn it in and then allow it to just kind of kick out and then do its own thing. Obviously, the braking balance will help with that a lot. And it's all going to be a big learning game. I mean, this is going to be absolutely huge, you know, once we've figured out the basics on, you know, how to get these cars to slide. And I mean, it's not bad. It really isn't from what we've been doing right now, man. Give a little bit of gas, brake hard, and then kind of good to go. But still, though, we still need that kind of level of handbrake control, which we do not have right now. So I'm going to go ahead and actually give this a little bit more on the uh current setup and give it a little bit oh we don't need no damn fuel man we're gonna fix damages though hell yeah um we're gonna actually go automatic by weather on these and just see what happens i feel like those tires had a lot of grip to it and i just don't know if that was the tires or if that was just the tune itself so we're gonna see for this next one gears felt okay um where'd my braking though here we go here we go so braking we're gonna move this all the way back to about 20 percent to there and we cannot go any more on the braking so we're gonna try that save that puppy right there let's go and we're gonna drive man go, go, go. please don't hit this again sir come on man drive properly come on i'll turn it for you turn it turn it Son of shit. okay Quit it, man i'm in second thank you oh shit all right now we do have our new tires on right away i can feel can feel the slippiness oh shit Okay, we stalled her. We stalled her. My bad, my bad. Now we need first gear. Thank you. Let's do a little bit of a damn burnout right here. I don't know if it's even working. It's definitely not working. This camera is trippy though, like that. A little bit of a hel helmet cam right now. Let's see what's good. Come on, we need more wheel spin. And an e brake is what we need. Okay. Shit! I'm sorry! Just drifting all into those. Now, what I am going to do, though, is turn my differential back to see whether or not um, if the acceleration should be the other way around and swapped. I want to see the difference with everything that we've done. And I mean, like I said, this is what you need to do in order to figure out what you're doing wrong in order to actually learn your tune. A lot of you guys ask me, you know, Slop, how do you learn your tunes, man? Like, what do you do to get these tunes? And it's just hours of practicing, moving sliders back and forth, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, and it really just comes down to that. Now, we're not even at, there we go, 90% we need. Thank you. Let's drive it again, man. Let's see. Go, go, go. We're going to smash this front end again, of course. This man cannot damn well drive. Look at this. Oh, my God. 
appreciate it. They even put me on the damn track. Alright, here we go. Damn, I feel like we actually have more wheel spin. To be completely honest, and like I said, ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Oh shit. Oh! Now you can see the suspension on that, just not ready for that turn. And this is a very tricky track, man. I know it doesn't seem like much, but uh, this is a very extremely hard track. Now we're gonna have to restart this. We stalled it, man. You find a lot of times in this game, you end up stalling your vehicle. Trying to just... Here we go. Ah! Maybe a little bit less front toe. I mean, like I said, this is tough, man. This is no joke, this game. This game will kill you, man. We're gonna go ahead and lower the front tire pressure. Um, we're also going to go ahead and give it a little bit more brake pressure on the back. Master scale, we're gonna increase this a little bit. And then also to the spindles, I wanna actually bring this all the way up to 200 and feel the difference of what we are doing. Now we may not come out with a solid tune on this car, but we will come out of this video with a better understanding of exactly what we are doing with our tuning features. You know what I'm saying? And we're actually gonna move the steering ratio a little bit faster and we're gonna give this a little bit less front camber. We're already spinning tires with zero degrees of camber on the back. There's really no need to do anything other than that. Um, and that should be okay for what we need. There we go. Let's give this a shot, man. definitely feel like that differential is huge. Tell me I didn't stall it. There's no way I stalled that. Oh my god, you stole the car so easy. There we go. Just gotta make sure that my foot is on the clutch when we're trying to hit these damn brakes. A little bit better. You see how that actual steering angle now is kind of working with me. Oh shit, that's not working with me though. Okay, okay. Like I said, this is a very, very tough track to be doing this on. And kind of a little bit discouraging if you know, you're know you a little bit frustrated at the fact. Me, myself, I'm not frustrated whatsoever. Uh, personally, I'm very excited that we can actually slide these cars. I mean, as I get more seat time in this game, you're gonna get a better understanding of you know what you are supposed to be doing when things happen. Now, as I said, biggest thing that I can say to you guys without the use of the handbrake, just make sure that you're using your clutch as much as you physically can. You know, when you are coming to these corners and you are braking hard like this, step on your clutch, don't let the car die, power it out just like that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shit. Okay, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have done one final lap. I took the time, kind of did a couple laps around the track, and I'm gonna show you guys one of my best runs that I've just done. Now, what I did was I actually put the differential from Excel. I left it at 90, but I brought the DXL all the way down to 25. Now, I'm hoping that this is gonna do a little bit better, and it actually felt a little bit better as well, too, which you guys are gonna see from these replay angles. Now I will say this game is absolutely fantastic for replay angles. It looks great and you know I just cannot wait to get a whole car pack going. Now as you guys can see the smoke looks beautiful and it even looks better when you are trailing people as well too. Now as I said the biggest thing for this car like I had said was the clutch and brake usage. You know once you guys got a good feeling down you could slide this car fairly well and I mean like I said there was a very tough actual elevation change on this track so it was a little bit tricky to get used to but once you got it though you're able to throw the weight of this car and it actually slid not too bad so this definitely gives me hope um, I will be doing more videos like these of drift tunes and such so if you guys do want to see more of these make sure you guys slap that like button I did end up getting a couple really nice slides near the end of these sections here and I gotta say 
Um, I am more than impressed with this game. You know, I was a little bit scared about the drifting, but after doing this, definitely shows me that there is a good chunk that we can do with drifting. There's not as many cars as we would like, but we can actually slide, and I think it looks hella damn good, man. It feels great as well, too, and right there, coming through that section, just absolutely killed it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys very much for coming around today. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to slap that like button. Sure, support in the comment section down below. And if you guys are not, you guys can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All of which are found in the description box down below. Jamoto Slab Train, Project Cars. Oh my god, man. What a fun day this has been today. And I hope you guys come and join us back tomorrow. I'm out. Peace. What a slap train and welcome back guys. Um.